So far on this channel, I have reviewed 300 watt power stations, 500 watt power stations, 1000 watt, 1200 watt, 2000 watt, 2400 watt hour power stations. And basically all of those power stations are good for a variety of things. What if you need to be able to say, run your gas furnace and your refrigerator? maybe power some uh, other outlets in the house, maybe ensure that your garage door can be opened in a power outage. You need something with a little more horsepower. <sighs> this is an empty box. There's no way I would have lifted this thing up if it were full. That would be about a hundred pounds plus the weight of the box. But this is the Mango Power Power E 3.5 kilowatt home backup system. Now it's it's portable in the sense that you can move it around. It's got wheels. It's got a telescopic luggage handle on it, but lifting this in and out of a vehicle, it's kind of a two person job unless your job is weightlifting. So we're gonna take a look at this thing, run it through the paces and find out if this is something you might wanna consider. Let's check it out. All right, now that I've been using this thing for about a month, let's go through some of the essential information here. First of all, price-wise. So this is on sale actually right now, I think for Black Friday deals, if you can still jump on it, for just under $3,100. And you can get that price through uh, Amazon or through Mango Power's website. I'll put links down in the description below. I don't even think you need any kind of discount code for that. At least they haven't given me any. And uh, But it does look like you can you know, click the little coupon on the Amazon page and they automatically give you the discount on their website. So go check that out if it's something you wanna go get more information on. But some of the other essential specs that you should be aware of is that, I think I already mentioned it, this thing weighs about 100 pounds. So it was a, it was a bit of a lift getting it up here on the desk and I'm, I'm glad I have a pretty sturdy desk. So the Mango Power E does have a five-year warranty, which is outstanding considering that most of the portable power stations in that product space are kind of sporting a 24 month warranty. There are a few exceptions to that, but that's more typical. Now let's talk battery capacity. The Mango Power E has a 3,500 watt hour battery capacity and it is uh, lithium iron phosphate. And you can expand that up to 7,000 watt hours with their expand expandable battery unit that stacks on top. And then you could actually connect two of those expanded systems together to get uh, 14 kilowatts or 14,000 watt hours of battery capacity, which is pretty substantial. Now, as I mentioned, they are using a lithium iron phosphate, and these are CATL cells, which are EV grade, some of the best cells in the business. Now, the AC inverter on the Mango Power E is a 3000 watt continuous 6000 watt peak inverter. And I do get comments from time to time on some of my power station videos suggesting that I don't give quite enough information about what you can run with a particular power station. So let's talk about what something like this can actually run. So can the Mango Power E run? Yes. I didn't, I didn't say anything yet. It runs all the things. I'm gonna need you to be more specific. All right then. Coffee maker? Yes. Table saw? No problem. Air fryer? You bet. Microwave? Oh, for sure. How about my big TV and sound system? Without breaking a sweat? My gaming PC? No. Really? Bruh, obviously yes. What about a full-size fridge? Undoubtedly. How about a fridge and a freezer? Yep. A window air conditioning unit? Sure, for at least a few hours. How about a gas furnace? Absolutely. All right, what about a gas water heater? That doesn't use electricity. How about a washing machine? Easily. Okay, what about an electric clothes dryer? Ah, uh, no, just kidding. Actually, you can, but you have to combine two of the Mango Power E's with one of their M-Socket Pros to create a 6,000 watt, 240 volt split phase system. So yeah, while the Mango Power E is portable-ish, uh, it really does shine as a emergency home power backup system or an off-grid system. In fact, Mango Power actually makes something called an M-Panel, which I don't think is coming out until December. So by the time you're watching this, it may already be available. But the M-Panel is designed to act as a transfer switch for emergency backup power to a grid-tied system, for example. Now, since the M-Panel is not available at the time that I'm making this video, I went ahead and had an electrician install for me a manual transfer switch. And that is very cool and lets me do some really fun things. So let's go see how that works. Now that we know we can fully top this thing off with an 800 watt solar array under kind of normal sky, decent sky conditions, let's find out if we can keep that connected to our 800 watt solar array. We're gonna connect the 30 amp out. That's an RV30 
up to this. Now, this is something I just recently had installed and it is a manual transfer switch. Right now, everything is down. I'm uh, running these six circuits off of my, uh, my grid power, but I have the ability to, when I got this installed, to select which of the six circuits from my main panel here did I prioritize to put over here. So I can, at any point, take these and move them off of the grid power to generator power, which is very cool. So I chose to move my master bedroom and front bedroom, which is my office space, really. I also chose to prioritize my refrigerator, my garage, just in case the power goes out, I need to be able to get out of my garage so I can turn the power on in the garage. My living room is kind of a, just a bonus, which is where the big TV is. And of course, the furnace. I have a gas furnace. So we're going to find out today if I can kind of just how long I can run maybe just the furnace and the refrigerator circuits off of the solar uh, using the Mango Power E as my power source, you know, with the solar recharging it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook up the cable and let's do that. All right, I've got a little LED indicator light on top of this connector, which tells me I am getting power from the unit here. So I'm going to, as I said, do my refrigerator and my furnace. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over the furnace now since it's not running. Now it's on generator power and my refrigerator is C. So off from grid and on to generator. Now we're going to find out how long those things run. Furnace finally kicked on, as you can hear in the background. All right, so the power E shows 600 watts, and we're also getting 600 watts of solar. So we're we're actually have exactly the same amount of solar that this uh, furnace is consuming right now. So we're at 100%. So obviously we can handle this load no problem. The question is, how long can it run, and will will this sustain the furnace and the refrigerator overnight until we start getting solar again tomorrow? That's what we're going to find out. All right, it is about just before eight o'clock in the morning. We're just starting to get some solar input. You can see we're down to 47%. So the big question will be, with the furnace and the refrigerator pulling power all day, can this thing catch back up and top us off to about 100% by the time the sun goes down again tonight? So short winter days, we're going to find out. All right, we are actually on day three now, running my furnace and refrigerator completely off-grid via solar and the Mango Power E. You can see here we're getting 588 watts input from solar right now. It is still, well, it's right at noon actually. It's 12.02 uh, p.m. on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but we are at 83%. I think we started the morning at about 42%. Uh, that's running everything overnight without any solar power. So just strictly off battery, battery power. But totally doable if you have a uh, natural gas furnace because you're really just running the blower power and uh, if you got something in the neighborhood of an eight, 800 watt solar array so I think it's just extremely impressive that I'm able to get uh, with an with just an 800 watt solar array I'm able to get this thing to act as off-grid power for my furnace and my refrigerator my central uh, two utilities in the house so this is working out great. I'm actually going to run this long term and just see how long I can keep doing this and reporting back. But yeah, for three days straight, I have no doubt I'm going to cap out at 100%. And, you know, we're going to test this in a variety of conditions going forward. And, I, and as I said, I will report back. But so far, this is working out fantastically. Let's take a look at how the charging works on this unit. All right, here's where you connect the solar array or solar input with the provided cable and it's threaded so you can attach it securely up to 2000 watts. Here's the grid power which again they provide you a standard three prong uh, cable for this and it is also threaded up to 3000 watts provided you have a 30 amp circuit. This is the e-link port which is uh, al allows you to connect this to their M panel which is an, like an, a, an emergency power transfer switch that they sell. And then of course if you want to pair two of these up with an M-Socket Pro, you connect them here uh, through the E-Port, which allows you to, to tie two of these Power E units together. So that's where all the connections are made. To say I'm not a huge fan of this little plastic panel, but gets the job done. Let's find out how long it takes to charge through a standard 
15 amp circuit. So I got that plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Looks like it's going to come up by itself. I didn't have to turn it on. All right, so we'll see the grid input watts here start ramping up. And I think I can hit quick charge and increase the amount of uh, wattage. So let's see what it climbs to by default. So we're just over 400 watts. Let's go ahead and hit quick charge and see what that ramps up to. So we started at roughly 428 watts. So it looks like just under 1700 watts. I know this thing has the capability of trying to pull upwards of 3,000 watts via AC, but you need a you need a 30 amp source to do that. So two and a half hours. All right, and we are at 100 percent. Yeah, so two and a half hours, or within two and a half hours, we're fully charged uh, without using a 30 amp circuit. So that was just using a 15 amp circuit using quick charge mode. So two and a half hours. Not too bad. Now, if I haven't mentioned it, the Mango Power E will take 2000 watts of solar with its MPPT charge controller. And the voltage range is 60 volts to 150 volts at a maximum of 20 amps. And in case you're curious, you can charge this thing via grid and solar at the same time to really maximize the fast charging capability. Now let's talk about the output ports on the front of the panel. And I'll put some video up here to give you a better close up of that. But you can see here, it's got a RV30, also called a NEMA TT30 which is a 120 volt, 30 amp output. You could use that to power an RV or to power an emergency home backup system. It's got four 120 volt, uh, 20 amp AC outlets. Uh, you can see that it's got two type C connectors, one of which is a PD 65 watt and one is a PD 100 watt. It's got six type A connectors and that are all uh, quick charge 3.0 capable of outputting 27 watts. And then it's got a couple of DC5521 accessory ports that output 12 volts uh, to 5 amps. And then, of course, it's got a cigarette lighter adapter as well. Now, I did run an AC discharge test on this to find out what the usable capacity is. And uh, let's cut to a clip of that. All right, let's do a DC discharge test on this Mango Power E. See, it takes a few seconds. Right now I'm going to turn on the AC inverter. That'll take just a second to kick on. There it just kicked on. We'll switch that to kilowatt hours. We're going to use a space heater. I'm just going to leave it on the high mode. I don't know if we can make that out. Just over 1100 watts. So let's let that run and see how many kilowatt hours we pull out of it. All right, looks like this finished about four minutes or so ahead of uh, when it had predicted. So I'm going to plug that. I don't know if I can, yeah, I can't reactivate the AC ports. So I'll go ahead and shut this down. Four second hold. Let me go ahead and plug this in real quick. All right, we got, 3,061 watt hours. So as you can see, we netted about 3,061 watt hours. And that gives us about 80% of the rated capacity, which puts it on the middle high end of other power stations that I've reviewed. Now, one of the last things I wanna talk about is the app. So the app experience is a little, it's kind of in a state of transition right now. There are actually two different apps out there, one called MP Union and another one called Mango Power. And the Mango Power app really isn't ready for prime time yet. So I've, with this kind of a pre-release unit that they sent me, I've been having to connect and use the, um, the MP Union app, which I, as I understand it, is, is eventually going away and not going to be used with this particular unit. I could be wrong about that, but I believe that their Go Forward app is going to be the Mango Power app. And I'll put some shots up here of what that Mango Power app looks like. I just can't connect the Mango Power app to this unit just yet because they haven't got it all uh, synced up yet and tied together. And it's uh, still undergoing development. So the app thing is not something I can really talk more about, but I'm hoping to do some follow-up video, more long-term discussion of how this thing has performed as, a, as an off-grid power source for my furnace and refrigerator and also how the app ends up working a little further down the road. But so far, even without the app, I'm able to get this thing to do 
pretty much everything that I wanted to do. And it's a pretty cool experience. And even with the, the app connection that I do have, I'm able to monitor its uh, status and turn the ports on and off from anywhere in the house because it's connected to my Wi-Fi rather than having to be super nearby with a Bluetooth connection. So I kind of like that, that's pretty cool. So to wrap up on the Mango Power E, I think if as a mobile sort of portable power station, if you can put this where it's going to be in your RV or your van uh, kind of setup, then and just kind of leave it there without having to move it around a whole lot, at least where you're gonna have to lift it. I think this is actually an extremely capable solution in that environment. It's just because it's so heavy, you don't wanna be you know, taking it like car camping with you. I don't think it's gonna be a very great fit for something like that, just because you're gonna to have to lift it and move it around a lot. Now, as a home backup system or an off-grid system, the expandability that this gives you and the capacity, I think really makes it a serious contender. And I think if you're in the market for something like that, or maybe in the early stages of investigating that, you should give this thing a look because I really do think that it's it's worth a look. It is definitely fitting the bill for me and that's how I'm gonna use it going forward. Do be sure to check the links below in the description on this. I think uh, there are some good deals going right now. I think those are gonna continue for a few days. I'm not really sure how long they're gonna continue, but check them out and see if they're still around uh, by the time you see this video. And if you find any of this information helpful, I really would appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Consider subscribing and all that sort of thing. I've got more cool products right around the corner that are coming. And uh, I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.